Today, we are keeping the morning worship service on the last day of the preaching week of the Feast of Tabernacles. For a week, all the family members in Zion, all over the world, diligently prayed to God the Father and God the Mother, asking for the Holy Spirit of the latter ring. Through today's Feast of Tabernacles, the grace of receiving the blessing of the Holy Spirit abundantly will surely be fulfilled. Today, let us study the words of God with the sermon titled, The Feast of Tabernacles and the Spring of the Water of Life. According to the Bible, the Feast of Tabernacles begins on the 15th day of the seventh month by the sacred calendar and ends on the 22nd day. It continues until the 21st day of the seventh month, and today is the last day, the eighth day. The Bible teaches us that on the last and greatest day, we must hold a sacred assembly on the 22nd day of the seventh month by the sacred calendar. Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the second set of tablets, inscribed with the Ten Commandments on the tenth day of the seventh month by the sacred calendar. The Israelites repented of their idolatry and many other sins they had committed until then. And they were moved by God's grace of the forgiveness of sins. Thus they built the sanctuary to place the second set of the stone tablets containing the Ten Commandments. The Ark of the Covenant was placed in the sanctuary, and the two tablets of the Ten Commandments were placed in the Ark. In order to let the Israelites remember the origin of the feast and that they lived in booths, God gave them the Feast of Tabernacles. Especially today, on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, God commanded them to hold a great sacred assembly. In the time of the New Testament, according to John chapter 7, verse 37, we can see that on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, Jesus cried out, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and take the free gift of the water of life. Two thousand years ago, when he first came to this earth in the flesh, he gave this sermon on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. The message is also mentioned in Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. When Apostle John saw the revelation, the Spirit and the Bride proclaimed the same message. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. We can see this repeated again. Then when we take a closer look at the facts related to the Feast of Tabernacles, God confirmed that the spring of the water of life is the Word of God. Think about the robber on Jesus' right side. Didn't he receive salvation? It is hard to understand or even imagine that the robber was saved. However, Jesus saw his faith and said, Today, you will be with me in paradise. What did his words do to the soul that would go to hell? Right at that moment, God gave him a special privilege and grace that led him to the kingdom of heaven. Also, when we look at the incident in the Garden of Eden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil itself did not have a poisonous fruit. Then why did Adam and Eve die from eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Father taught us the answer. It was because God's word already testified, when you eat of it, you will surely die. If God's word had not been spoken, and Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, there would not have been a problem. However, since God's word testified, when you eat of it you will surely die, when they were tempted and ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Adam and Eve lost their way to eternal life and had no choice but to die. Wasn't the root cause of their problem the word that was spoken to them by God? Also in the book of John, chapter 6, verse 54, Jesus said, Whoever eats the flesh of the Son of Man and drinks His blood has eternal life. If Jesus didn't say these words, 
Even if we eat Jesus' flesh and drink His blood, will we have eternal life? We will never have eternal life. Jesus established the promise of receiving His flesh and blood through the bread and wine of the Passover of the New Covenant. He said, Whoever eats this bread and drinks this wine will eat my flesh and drink my blood. And whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, I will give him eternal life. Thus the Word of God is the water of life. If it had not been said, whoever eats the flesh of the Son of Man and drinks his blood has eternal life, then even if you ate the bread and drank the wine on the Passover, would you have eternal life? It would only be a piece of bread and a cup of wine and would never give us eternal life. The Word of God holds such great authority. It is so great because it has the power of life. Even the robber on Jesus' right side was saved by the words, Today you will be with me in paradise. Reflecting on all this, the Word of God has such great power. In this age of the Holy Spirit, God has come as the Spirit and the Bride and said, Whoever is thirsty, let him come to me and take the water of life. However, the effect of these words depends on how much faith you have in this water of life. Even if you go to the hospital and take the medicine that your doctor prescribes, the effect will vary depending on your state of being. Not all people are the same. The same is true of our faith. There are those who firmly believe these words with faith and others who simply think, these are the words that are always given to us. Though both receive the same water of life, to one, the water of life has a very powerful effect, yet to the other, it is meaningless. Let's go to the book of John, chapter 7, and look at the words of Jesus. John chapter 7, verse 37. On the last and greatest day of the feast, it is the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, according to chapter 7, verse 2. Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the Scriptures has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. The same word is given in Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. In chapter 22, verse 17, it says, The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. In the book of John, chapter 7, the same message was proclaimed by Jesus alone. Yet in Revelation chapter 22, there is one other person with him. Who are they? The Spirit and the Bride. God the Father and God the Mother, who are the saviors, appeared to us in the last age of the Holy Spirit and gave us these words. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and satisfy his thirst to his heart's content. Father wrote in his truth book, The Mystery of God and the Spring of the Water of Life. How would the Spirit and the Bride appear on this earth to give the water of life to their children? He then referred us to John chapter 1. When we look at chapter 1, verse 1, and chapter 1, verse 14, it says, The Word became, what did the Word become? Flesh. In other words, the Spirit and the Bride come to this earth in the flesh and give the Word of the water of life to all the children of Zion. Then don't we, God's children, need to know about God the Father and God the Mother, who are the Spirit and the Bride? We must know them. The Pharisees and the Jews, who did not recognize who Jesus was, crucified Him. Although Jesus spoke the words of the water of life, 
which were true and more precious than gold, they rejected, refused, and denied all of them. It was because they did not realize who Jesus was. They only knew Jesus as the son of Joseph, the carpenter of Nazareth, and as the son of Mary. Thus, they ended up committing the grievous sin of crucifying Jesus. The same is true in this age. Today, on the last and greatest day of the Feast of Tabernacles, God will pour out the blessing of the Holy Spirit of the latter rain as He promised. The greatest prerequisite to receive the Holy Spirit from God is to know God. Only then will God give us the reign of the Holy Spirit. Let's take a look at Hosea chapter 6. Hosea chapter 6, verse 1. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but He will heal us. He has injured us, but He will bind up our wounds. After two days, He will revive us. On the third day, He will restore us, that we may live in His presence. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge Him. As surely as the sun rises, He will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. The greatest prerequisite to receive the Holy Spirit of the latter rain is that we must know God. In the book of John, chapter 7, verse 37, Jesus came to the earth alone and cried out at His first coming. In Revelation, chapter 22, verse 17, it is recorded that God the Father and God the Mother shouted the same words, Take the water of life. Since we are living in the age of the Holy Spirit, who is the God we must come to know? We must know God the Father and God the Mother. Let's see the source of the water of life by going to Zechariah chapter 14. Chapter 14, verse 7. It will be a unique day, without daytime or nighttime, a day known to the Lord. When evening comes, there will be light. On that day, living water will. Where does the water of life come from? God's word of the water of life will flow out from Jerusalem, half to the eastern sea and half to the western sea, in summer and in winter. This means that the water of life will keep flowing without rest. The water of life that flows out from Jerusalem is God's word of grace. It is the word of life that comes forth to quench the thirst of those who are thirsty, regardless of whether it is summer or winter. If God says, Today you will be with me in paradise, then you will be in paradise. If God says, Your sins are forgiven, then the forgiveness of your sins takes place right at that moment. Today we know that God the Father and God the Mother came to this earth in the flesh. However, while we are living our lives, we should be like the two blind men who asked God, Lord, I want to see. Jesus replied to them, Then according to your faith will it be done to you. The effects of the words from my mouth will be done according to your faith. The eyes of the two blind men were opened. A world of light was opened to them, though they had once been imprisoned in pitch-black darkness. Today we are learning that the living water comes out of Jerusalem as knowledge. But let's think about if we lived 2,000 years ago, in the time of Jesus. Compared to the faith of the woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years and touched Jesus' cloak, and the faith of the two blind men, our faith may be lacking. Their eyes were opened, and God's abundant grace was given to them. The God of that time and the God of today did not change at all. However, the perspective of the people of that age is different from the perspective of the people of this age. 
thus in order for the gospel to be preached in Samaria and to the ends of the earth, and for us to quickly find all our lost brothers and sisters who are the materials for Jerusalem Temple. We should ask father and mother as much as the two blind men did. If the word came out of their mouth, there must be a result. Father explained this matter in his truth book, The Mystery of God and the Spring of the Water of Life. Didn't it all happen through the Word of God? When God said, Your sins are forgiven, their sins were forgiven. When God said, Today you will be with me in paradise, he could go to paradise. When God said, Whoever eats the flesh of the Son of Man and drinks his blood has eternal life, the work of receiving eternal life took place. When he said, according to your faith will it be done to you, there were results according to their faith. If he had not said to them, according to your faith will it be done to you, wouldn't it have been impossible for the blind men to open their eyes forever? Even though God is telling us in detail where the water of life comes from, it seems that we are not thirsty enough. Since I am not thirsty enough, I will drink it if I have it. But I don't have to drink it if I don't have it. We lack urgency, not realizing that we will die if we don't drink it. If we are desperate, like the two blind men, the power of God's work will surely be fulfilled in us. We should ask God. It is good to have many diligent workers, but what we need the most is God's words of blessing. We can accomplish this with your words of blessing, Please bless us. Whether we are one or many, it is only with God's word that we can accomplish this work. We may ask ourselves, why can't we see good results even though we have more people, better systems, and better conditions? Isn't this work of the gospel the work that God is carrying out? We can receive as much as God opens to us. At his first coming, Jesus said, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and take the water of life. In Revelation chapter 22, the Spirit and the Bride appear in the flesh in the last days, saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and receive the water of life. But no one comes. It means that they are not thirsty. No one is thirsty. No one wants it, and no one is looking for it. So what will happen to this great blessing? It is only being stored away. We must receive it as soon as possible. We must earnestly plead to God, Please bless me, please. When we have the same desperate faith as the two blind men, and have enough faith in God, everything will be easily accomplished. After we correctly recognize the water of life, which is the Holy Spirit we are promised to receive today, then our prayers and wishes will be granted. God sees our earnestness and grants them to us. If a child does not earnestly need something and asks their parent, Dad, if you want to give me pocket money, give it to me. But if you don't want to, that's fine too. I don't really need it right now. Would any parent give the child money? Wouldn't parents grant their children's request when they earnestly ask for something that they really need? We have offered many prayers to God over this past week. We should not offer up our prayers just because it is the feasts. If there is no urgency, our prayers will be lifted up in vain. We must be truly earnest about them. Don't you and I long for the kingdom of heaven, our eternal home? If so, above all, we must be clothed with the power of the word of the Holy Spirit. Only when we carry the word of blessing can the paths of the gospel around the world be made straight and all the rugged roads become level. The Spirit and the Bride have such power. And isn't this Bride Jerusalem? In the book of Galatians chapter 4, it is written, But the Jerusalem that is above is free. And who is she? 
What springs from mother? The water of life flows from her. Even if God teaches us these things all the time, if we don't have any urgency and act like, I don't need it, but if God gives it, then I will receive it, then we will never receive whatever He gives us. Let's take a look at Ezekiel chapter 47. Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 1. The man brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple. This is the temple of God. Toward the east, for the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. The water that is coming out from the temple is the water of life. Chapter 47, verse 6. He asked me, Son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, This water flows toward the eastern region and goes down to the Arabah, where it enters the sea. When it empties into the sea, the water there becomes, what will happen? It will become fresh. When the water of life that flows from the temple enters the sea, it is refreshed. It means it will revive. Verse 9. Swarms of living creature will. What will happen? They will all live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Where does the water come from? Here it is written as the water that flows out from the temple. If we study about the temple, what is the most holy place in Revelation chapter 21? It is Jerusalem. What is flowing from it? The living water flows from there. Here, the water of life flows from the sanctuary. But where does it come from according to Zechariah chapter 14? It springs from Jerusalem. What power and authority does the water of life that springs up from Jerusalem temple have? It has the power and authority to revive all living beings wherever it flows. However, we leave this amazing medicine next to us and just run around on our own. We think that the ability we have or the sweat we shed is what saves a person, but it is the water of life that saves them. If we fail to distinguish this, it will be difficult and time-consuming. Thus the prophet Hosea said, if we want to receive the Holy Spirit of the latter rain, who must we know first? Press on to know God. Furthermore, you must fully understand the power and the authority of the word that comes out of the mouth of God. Don't all those who correctly understand it receive God's grace? Let us keep in mind that the water of life that God gives us has the power and authority to bring all living creatures to life, no matter where it flows into the world. Let's move on to verse 12. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear, because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. Everyone, through the Feast of Tabernacles we are keeping today, let us keep in mind that every word that comes out of the mouths of God the Father and God the Mother will surely be fulfilled. The water of life is not something physical, but the word that comes from the mouth of God. Thus, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, God already promised to give each person according to what they need. Those who want blessings will be given the blessings, and those who want the power of evangelism will be given the power of evangelism. We should think, today if God says, your sins are forgiven, that is enough for me. If He says, I will let you preach the gospel in Samaria and to the ends of the earth, so that all your brothers and sisters who have been lost may be found, that word is enough for me. We should say, since this work can only be done by God, 
We want to be closed with the power of God. This mission can never be accomplished with our own strength. It can only be accomplished when we obey the words that father and mother have given us. This is the act of being closed with power. Through this Feast of Tabernacles, we must diligently know God, know the power of God, and correctly understand the power of God's words. In the book of John, chapter 12, it says, I know that His command leads to eternal life. Everyone, God's Word is the water of life. By correctly understanding the power of God's Word, we should not let the water of life go in one ear and out the other. Rather, we must engrave it in our hearts. We should not say, I don't care if you give me the Holy Spirit of the latter rain or not. Instead, let us say, Truly, without the Holy Spirit, we cannot do anything with our own strength. Father and Mother, please clothe me with the power of the Holy Spirit and lead me to preach the good news about the wonderful world that I have never seen before to all people in the world. To do this, we must be clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the way to be clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit. At some point, you and I will realize that everything in the Gospel has been fulfilled according to the Word of God. Through the Feast of Tabernacles, I ask all of you to realize once again that the water of life that is given to us is the Word of God. By this, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.